everyone. I'm here again with Diogo Gonzalez. I'm so happy to have you here. Diogo, how are you? Thank you. I'm great. Yes. Uh, getting ready for the new year. <laughs> yes, to start a new year. We need it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, we tell us a little. To... Yes, sorry, sorry. Continue. We need a fresh start. Yes. Yes. It's a concept from behavioral science that you can apply a lot to the online world. Fresh yeah. starts. <laughs> yeah, then we can, you know, let's introduce yourself. Tell us a little about your background and then tell us about this. Because I, I know that concept and it's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, my, my background, basically, I, I, I started with social psychology. But then I stayed, I, I was all always very curious about every areas related with business and human decision making. So I, I studied data science in a master and then I, I, I studied behavioral economics for PhD. Um, and uh, yeah, and then I came back to Portugal when now I teach engineering school management courses. I'm visiting professor and uh, I, I found uh, I'm the founder of Nudge Portugal, uh, which is a startup that um, in, we are doing the first um, nudge and behavioral science projects here in Portugal. Yeah, I know you are doing great things, Diogo. Mm, so yeah, tell us a little about this new start. But it's really it's a really interesting concept. Yeah, fresh start is, is this idea that um, it's easier to for people to accomplish goals if you give them landmarks that will uh, offer to to the user or to 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 someone the idea of a fresh start of of starting something new, and that's also always very motivational. Uh, okay, because uh, it's it's motivational to start and also to feel that you are close okay. close to the end. So if you divide the macro goal in several micro goals, you increase the probability that um, people will achieve the macro goal by dividing him uh, dividing it into small uh, smaller small steps that lead to the to the big goal. Yeah, that's why we always start for New Year's Eve. We are going to start going to the gym and we are going to start doing things, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you can use this principle a lot in the way you give feedback to users on, on uh, when they use a digital platform, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good. And can you tell us a little what the meaning about NAT? And nudging, because I, I'm not sure if everyone listening will know what it yeah, is. Yeah, nudge is this idea that already originated several Nobel Prizes in economics that you can change the uh, the behavioral of people, namely the economic one, by changing the context where they make decisions. So mm -hmm. by changing the position of an item in a screen, you can influence uh, the choice of that item how many clicks people give to that item and how many purchases of that item. You can increase or decrease this number by choosing where to position the item in the screen. So this is an example, something as simple as this. Mm -hmm. The position of, of the item in the screen, in the screen is a, uh, an example of a nudge. By, by deliberatively choosing the position, you are uh, deliberatively influencing the purchase of that item, the decision of the user. And what are some triggers that can influence our customers' buying decisions? That you can do using that. Uh, triggers? What? what yeah. In what sense? Yeah. What we can use to make the, the to influence the decisions of our customers. You say one example. But what are other things that we can do, not only online, but also offline? Uh, yeah, but many, many examples. The, um, like we can study which are the 
uh, most effective messages to influence the decision of someone. Uh, we can um, use the timing, the time of the day or the time of the, of the month or the time of the week we give the message. Uh, basically, we are being influenced all the time, like the, with the color, we can play with the color, we can play with the framing of information. So you can give the same information using different frames, okay? Like showing the same picture using different frames. Like saying that, for example, meat is, this meat has 85% um, um, lean, lean, is 85% lean, or saying that this meat is as 15% grass. Mm -hmm. So you are giving the same information, but the impact on the consumer is completely different. When you say that it's 85% lean, uh, you increase the purchase of the meat and even the subjective experience. Like uh, the consumer reports better taste, better subjective experience of the meat when you say it's 85% lean than when you say it's 15% uh, fat. No, oh, it's really interesting. Yeah. And how can we, how can knowledge about decision make help us to improve those choices? Uh, yeah, but if you, if you, the more we know about how the context influences the choice, the more we can create uh, choice architectures that improve the decision making of people and societies in general. Mm, so, so yeah, it's as easy as that. Uh, so if you know that when you create a default that everyone in the country will be organ donor, you increase the percentage of organs available to, to the health system, then you just have to make that, you, you make it a default. Uh, because if it's not the default, if, it's, if the default is it's not to be an organ donor, you won't have enough organs for the healthcare system of, of the country. So it's just as simple as that to, to understand uh, the principles and then to, to apply. What can be not so simple is the process where you apply, where you need to understand what's behind the choice. Why is the choice not optimal? Uh, and know how, which principle is blocking the choice from optimality. Uh, so that's the process that it's not so simple that requires uh, careful research and study and measuring the impact of the intervention. Mm -hmm. And what, what is what makes judgment and decision making difficult? Why is that? Um, the, what makes it difficult? That's a very good question. I think no one ever uh, made that question to me, but um, yeah, in, in general, what makes it difficult, it's because most of the influences on our decision making are uh, out of our control and out of our conscience level. So we are much more influenced by uh, unconscious factors than we would like to believe so. And that originates a lot of uh, irrationality in our behavior. Um, and yeah, uh, but there, there's also where it lies the opportunity. The more we, we become aware as human beings of all these unconscious factors, the more we can um, uh, improve our decision making. Uh, so for example, if we know that um, uh, when we are in a, um, in a, uh, like in what, what uh, researchers in this area called in a hot state, in a emotional state, mm -hmm. uh, we shouldn't make decisions in, in this, uh, uh, or, or we should delay the decision uh, to a moment where we are in a more cold state as the literature uh, calls it. So, so this is a way of uh, using this knowledge to improve our decision-making competences. 
Yes, it's really interesting. And what are the op opportunities of consumer choices online? Uh, consumer choices online have uh, a lot of opportunities and a lot of um, threats because w when we make decisions online, basically there are no uh, warehouse limits, right? So the mm -hmm. alternatives are so much more. Like when I buy in a in an app, for example, we have um, a, an app that it's also a startup. It was created by Portuguese people called Farfetch, mm -hmm. where you can buy luxury items uh, like clothing, luxury items, mm -hmm. mostly yeah. through this app. And they what they do is that they pick the article in any store all over the world. So wow. he, they present all the items to, to you and you have you choose them. So you have access to all these items mm -hmm. that uh, you wouldn't never have in in only one city like in Lisbon, the city where I live. So this makes the alternatives almost infinite, right? Yes. And that's good, but it, it but it's also bad because it makes decision making so much difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, what what behavioral science and the, the sciences of decision can can help is where they can help is to help the 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 owner of the app and the user to um, to deal with this complexity okay to create choice architectures that will allow people to do to still do the best the best choices for themselves in a world of of um, threatening um, alternatives because there are so 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 many. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's true. When you go to to a place in there, for example, a restaurant, they have a big menu and it's really difficult to choose. Yeah. So in a store like yeah. yeah, like after ten alternatives, choice becomes very difficult. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, here is a so restaurant that they have dish only one dish. Or, so, yeah. Yeah, decisions with more than then ten alternatives uh, are 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 very difficult to make, but decisions with less than four are also difficult. Mm -hmm. So there's an optimal number in terms of alternatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really important to know. And do you think there is a freedom of choice when nudging people? And th by the way, that number seems to be ten. That's the ah, right. of course depends on the context, but. 10 is a very good number of alternatives to give to someone to help the person to make a choice. But you were saying? Exactly. Yeah, I was saying that if there is freedom of choice when you nudge people, is the people free or we yeah, are like kind the, of... Yeah, the, the answer to that question that normally is given is that there's no neutral uh, context of choice. So... If you go to a supermarket, no matter the way you position the items in the supermarket, there will also all, there will always be uh, an influence on your decision. So the items you put in the in the in the in the beginning of the supermarket, no matter if they are um, like chocolate or sugary drinks or if they are vegetables you are increasing the probability of purchase. So there's no way to escape these uh, influences. So yeah, you yeah. cannot, the thing is how you use this knowledge. You can use it to to sell art, the articles that give you more profit or the ones that are healthier or mm -hmm. any other goal that you can have as an institution or as a, as a business or as a person. And if you have to give only three tips to startups for entrepreneurs that they are starting their own business and three tips to help them how to start using this, what would you say? Like as an entrepreneur or as a Yeah, as, as a, a company. As a company, if you want to to connect in the right way with your customers to help them make a good choice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like in terms of customer behavior or like for mm -hmm. ex in terms of um, 
Um, in terms of the digital context, like one thing, I one thing from what I know from my my experience and also from what I read, it's to make it as simple as possible to mm -hmm. to make it simple. Like too much information is never good. So there's a there's an asymmetry in in terms of how, mu how much information you give to people on a website, for example, where it's much more dangerous to give too much than to give too little. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's better to give too little than to give too much. So s simple is is uh, is always the best. Uh, then oh, and uh, like oh, another. Thing that it's very important it's aesthetics mm -hmm. uh, so um, like um, uh, beauty beautiness is subjective but uh, it's very important when someone looks at your business at your website at your offers that they look good uh, because in the end that's what will capture attention and will drive the choices of the consumer. Um, yeah, and, and then eventually I would give a third uh, uh, advice that would be to try to to create the, the maximum value for your customer, to personalize your, your offer, your relation with your customer. Uh, because that will also uh, be very important in terms of uh, loyalty, customer loyalty, and in, in terms of having uh, a long relationship with your client. Trust, trust is very yes. important. The, your clients should should have maximum trust in in your in yourself and in your business. Yeah, that's really important. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Diego. Anything else you would like to add? Any advice uh, or anything? Or? No, no, I just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just well, I think uh, the, all the information, I, if I, they apply it good, is a lot of work. It seems easy hmm. in the surface, but it's, it's work. Yeah. To implement for sure. it. So we will do yeah, an S video with more information and more the next steps. Yeah. For now, I just wish everyone a very good 2021, and that uh, it can, we can really get back to to our projects, to our work, and to overcome all this all this pandemic of 2020. Same for you. Same okay. for you, Diogo. Thank you very much okay. for joining again. Thank you. See you soon. Have a good evening. Bye bye. Bye. Ciao. Bye.